Well, good morning, St. Luke's. Good morning. Amazing. Good morning to those of you who are joining online as well. I don't know, can they see us too? Don't know. Turn around and give them a wave anyway. Woo! Great. Well, welcome, welcome. We're going to worship the Lord together. Um, but as you can see, we've got a bit of a different service planned out for today. The seats are different. There's some strange fruit at the front. All will be revealed. Um, but for now, we're going to stand and we're going to worship the Lord together because um, that is why we are all here today. So let's, let's stand together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Spirit of God, we welcome you into this place. And Father, we pray that your spirit would come and fill this church, fill the homes of those who are tuning in online. Come, Lord Jesus. So, Father, we come to you this morning in all the uncertainty and the disappointment of everything that's going on in the world at the moment. And we just acknowledge that before you. And we thank you that you are big enough to hold all of that. So, Lord Jesus, we lift your name high in this place. Help us to lift our eyes this morning up beyond our and above our circumstances. Help us to fix our eyes on you. In Jesus' name. Father, a blessed angel came, and 
to certain shepherds, for tidings of the same. And that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Thank you, team. Great. Um, well, as you can see, I've got some strange things at the front. Lyra, can you see some strange things at the front? What can you see? You're, you're dressed very, very similarly to what we have at the front. What's this? Amen. Yes. We have got some oranges, and what can you see in these bags? What can you see? Beauty. Yes. Amazing. I won't get you to name everything else in the bags. Um, right, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to tell, we're going to learn something about Christmas through these random objects I have here at the front. And it's something that we call a Chris Tingle, um, which up until maybe a couple of weeks ago, I thought was somebody called Chris Dingle. I thought maybe it was his idea and he'd come up with it. Turns out that's completely wrong. Um, and it's actually called a Chris Tingle, um, which includes these strange objects that we have here at the front. So I'm going to invite you, if you could come up just a table at a time, to come and please get an orange each and a packet each. So why don't we start with, Anya, do you want to come up, lead the way? So I'm just going to grab an orange, so you grab a little bag, and do you want to grab a napkin as well? Wonderful, look at that demonstration. Fabulous, thank you very much, Anya, great. Do you guys want to come forward now as well? Um, great, cool, if you guys just figure that out and all come and kind of socially distance as you do, that would be great. Awesome. Great, cool. Right, don't be shy, I think it might take forever, just be sensible with your spacing. <laughs> Awesome. Um, just a disclaimer, parents, there is a small pin in the bag of bits. So maybe you want to whip that out first before we get any puncture wounds. <laughs> Great. 
great. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. How are we doing? Don't worry, you're allowed more than two napkins, Kai. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. This, yeah, adults and children alike, this is for everybody. Great. Well done, Els, you got it. Well done. Don't forget the pin in the bag. Don't forget the pin in the bag. <laughs> I know. Great. Well done. Good stuff. Okay. So I think um, in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to need an orange as well. Can, it, can everybody see this really clearly? Yeah, what about now? See it really clearly? You can't see it? Oh. Really? You really can't see it? I've got the biggest oranges that I could find. You're telling me you really can't see this orange? <sighs> I thought this might be a problem. Um, okay. I've got a bit of a crazy idea. I've just thought of it. It might not work. Maybe it was a word from the Lord. Who can say? Um, but I think if we just shout orange really loudly, it might get bigger. What do you reckon? Should we give it a go? Okay. You ready? Three, two, one. Orange! I think it's a bit bigger. No? Still not? Okay. One more time. Are we ready? Three, two, one. I mean, it, it worked. It's because I had my booster jab on oh, Friday. Oh, speaking, yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> you, you're looking a bit peaky, John. Yeah, this is what happens. On, uh, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, thanks. Yeah, okay. Well, that's kind of worked. Did you want to hold that? Sure. Why don't you hold that? One of my brethren. <laughs> Keep going, Lara. This is completely normal. <laughs> the, the, first thing, <laughs> the first thing we're gonna get. The first thing we're gonna get is the orange. Everybody got your orange. Great. Families at home. I know that some some of you picked up um, your oranges. <laughs> We've got oranges. Great. So what the oranges represent? The oranges represent the world. And God created the world, and the world was good. He created light and darkness. He created the sea, the sky, the mountains, um, the animals, and the incredible creatures that live in the bottom of the sea and the depths of the jungle. John, uh, shall I call you John? Shall I call you Chris? Chris? I don't know what to call you, really. Orange? Cool. Mr. Orange? John is fine. John is fine? Yeah. That's you fine. sure? Yeah, absolutely fine. Mr. John Chris Orange Dingle? No, that's just fine. This is, <laughs> this is keep going. John, what is your favourite animal? My favourite animal is a giraffe. But what is other, what's other people's favourite animal? Because he created the world and all the animals in it. What's your favourite animal? Monkey. Monkey. Tiger. Right. Tiger. Yes, that's a good one. A unicorn or dubious? More? Unicorn. We've got more unicorns. <laughs> keep them coming. Anglerfish. Your favourite animal is an anglerfish. That's strange. <laughs> they are cool. They are cool creatures. Great. Okay. Amazing. So he, um, as well as all of the animals, um, including anglerfish and unicorns, um, God created human beings, you and me. He created this amazing world in all of its colour and splendour and majesty. And when he created it, it was perfect. It was perfect. But it didn't stay perfect for long. God gave human beings a choice to love him or not. Because love is only love when we choose it. And God wanted us to be free, to be liberated, 
to choose. And lots of times we, we choose not to love him. We make selfish choices. We um, choose things for our own desire. And we pretend that we know best and that we don't need God. Um, and that's what we call sin. And the middle letter of sin is I. When we are at the center of our own worlds um, and God is not. And the result of that is, um, is that our world is not what God wanted to be. So he came up with a plan. And this is when you're going to need the next part of your Chris Tingle. So if you've got any, you can figure it out. But he came up with a plan. In John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save it through him. So this mighty God who we've just talked about, who created all things and who loves us, saw the world and what sin had done to it and the separation that it had caused between us and him. And so he came up with a plan to put an end to sin. So he came to earth in the form of a tiny baby to live a completely human life. One to show us exactly what he was like, kind, compassionate, just, unconditionally loving, to leave us no room to make up any other kinds of God in any other kind of image. And two, to do what we couldn't do, to live a perfect life without sin, and to die in our place and to defeat death. So, how did this work? What do we need next? We need the ribbon. <laughs> we need the ribbon, so get out your ribbon. ribbon. Yep. And the ribbon goes all the way around the world... We've not practiced this bit. <laughs> goes all the way around. As you can see demonstrated here, it goes all the way this around a, the world. This is, a, this is very much a kind of foretelling of what happens to me after Christmas dinner. <laughs> it's kind of trying to loosen the belt a little bit. Right, you got it? Yeah. You can tie that yourself. It's a bit high up. You bring, <laughs> bring it down a bit. That's it. That was a bit, uh, was a bit, a bit lower. A bit, in, yeah, about there. About there's good. <laughs> keep going, keep going, I've got this under control. So the red ribbon goes all the way around the world, and being the colour of blood, it reminds Christians that the baby we celebrate, whose birthday we celebrate at Christmas time, was born to die, because this was God's solution. He came down and became Jesus. So they need to put your ribbon on. Yep. And you've got a little pin that goes with your ribbon. Yep. We don't obviously have a pin with me, because that would be quite deflating all round. <laughs> Uh, but get your pin, and you pin your ribbon around the orange. Yeah. Like yes, that. Well brilliant. done, Hayes. Because we've done it already. Oh, look at this. Pros. Absolute pros. So let's give them a bit of time to do that. Show us how you're getting on. Yep, show me. Oh, very good. That's very good. Very, very good. So can anyone tell me, what does the orange represent? Very good. By the way, I see some adults that are not participating... Come and get your bags. Make your crystals. <laughs> come on, get your bags. Yes, Lucinda, come on. Thank you, Lucinda. Yeah, we go. Yeah. Come on, let's give them a bit of time to catch up. It's fine. <laughs> Listen, if I'm dressed like this, the least you can do... <laughs> the least you can do is get your oranges. So oh, there's enough for the adults to have one. Brilliant. Brilliant. It's not too late. It's not too late if someone's missed their window. So the orange represents the what? And what does that tell us about the world? Is it not just the world, but what is it about the world that we remember? Everything in it, which was good and very good, is described in the Toes. Bible. So, <laughs> and what does the ribbon represent? <laughs> Keeping your trousers on, yeah. <laughs> The ribbon represents the blood of Jesus. And why was that needed? Forgiveness. 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 Forgiveness of sins. Anyone else? Great. Good. So what's next? Okay, so the next thing we're going to need to get is the cocktail sticks. Well, these come with a bit of a hazard warning. They are spiky on both ends, as cocktail sticks normally are. Not doing that. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> okay, have those prepped and ready. 
Um, and we are going to worship together before we yeah, get them prepped and ready. Good. <laughs> we're going to worship together. And we're going to sing Lights of the World. Great. Um, should we all stand? Put, put a pause, put a pin in it. Oh, John, your thing's fallen down. Yeah. <laughs> Can you bend over? <laughs> it's fine, I'll hold it, symbolically. <laughs> You're doing some backing vocals for us, John. You want to join us for worship down here, John? <laughs> <laughs> Oh 
together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. The cocktail sticks. Oh, there we go. Um, great. So, have you got them prepped and ready? Okay. Um, so. Do you have the cocktail sticks? Show us the cocktail sticks. <laughs> now, can anybody tell me what the four seasons are? Shout them out. What? There you go. Very good. That is right. That is right. So that's what the cocktail sticks represent. Yes. These are starting, I can, can see some that are stuck in. It's looking very good. They kind of remind me of a Millennium Dome model that I made in the year 2000. Does anyone else remember making those? <laughs> I think I still have it at home somewhere made out of sticks. Laura, there do I good. have cocktail sticks? You do have cocktail sticks, but I don't think you can have them yet because we've not done the next oh, okay. bit. All right. Yours, fine. They come together. Okay. Okay. So. We have the four cocktail sticks to remind us of the four seasons. Very good. That's brilliant. And these remind us that whilst the seasons change, God remains the same. And while circumstances in our lives can change, God and his love and his compassion never does. So the other thing about seasons is that in different seasons, it produces different kinds of fruits. So now it's time to, for the most exciting bit, the bit you've all been waiting for, a bit that Rapesh is already making his way through the sweets. <laughs> Great, so get your sweets out. Because um, these remind us of God's good gifts to the world. And sweets are like sweet things, they're like fruits. And they remind us of these good things. So okay. take the fruits. Let me get yours. Take the sweets and pin them onto your cocktail sticks. Yep. Okay? So you should have four cocktail sticks. I only have two. <laughs> There we go. Look at this. Your belt's slipping again. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. It's a very difficult. They don't train you for this. I haven't got the wingspan to put it back around you. <laughs> we'll just leave it there for now. I can't even see it. <laughs> so you pin them, uh, your sweets. Traditionally, you would have had dried fruits on there to remind you the fruits of the earth, but sweets are more fun. So uh, we're going to put sweets on. So you should have four cocktail sticks in four corners with the sweets on them as well. Try not to eat too many sweets, otherwise you lose the effect. <laughs> you may eat them afterwards, maybe. That's good. Who's got a finished one? Well, there's a finished one down the front. Very good. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so these fruits or sweets remind us of God's goodness in creation. His good gifts to us, um, for us to enjoy. And when we choose to follow Jesus, the Holy Spirit is God in us. And we become more like Jesus to those around us. So, John. So if that's what the fruits are like, the fruits are there to remind us of the fruits that we bear in our lives when the Holy Spirit is in us and make us more like Jesus... What do you think that might look like? Yeah. What does it look like for us to be like Jesus to the people around us? Can somebody give me some descriptions of what that might look like? Call it out, to be like Jesus to other people. Sharing your sweets, yes, yeah. sharing. That's good. Generosity, anything else? Forgiveness. Forgiving, yeah. Brilliant. Anything else? Kindness, powerful. Powerful. Oh. Kindness, thank you. Compassion. Compassion. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. So those are the kind of things that we want to show others, the fruits, the sweet things of our lives that we want to show to the world. That's right. Um, and in... Um, in Galatians, it reminds us of what some of these fruits are, that love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. 
Um, and these are some of those kind of good fruits of the Spirit that we're able to show to other people. Okay, so the last thing that we need to get to complete our press tingle is the candle. Ding, ding, ding. That's right. So if you can see um, in your pack, you'll have a candle. Don't put the with, candle in quite yet because you have another thing. Which is the tin foil. Which is the foil. So you need the foil first. Yeah. And then you need to wrap it around the base of the candle. What does the foil represent? Yes, the foil represents us reflecting Jesus to the world. Ding, ding, ding. It's also <laughs> a good safety measure. It is. Love it. And then, once you've wrapped it around the base of the candle, you then place it in the middle of the orange. There are napkins There are at the front. little <laughs> uh, crosses that we put pre-prepared so that it shouldn't be too difficult to shove it in. <laughs> but there are napkins should it all get a little bit messy. <laughs> Very good. Okay. So we have the final piece. Is this... It didn't make it smaller, did you? This is no. to go over. Here we go. We're going to put our candle on. You... <laughs> wow. Wow, there we go. That's it. <laughs> you know, you just, you just have to stand there now. The demonstration throughout, throughout the next bit of the talk. <laughs> that was pretty good, isn't it? Do you want to bring it up forward? Should we do a side-by-side -side comparison? Let's see. Let's see how well we've done. Apart from your yeah, ribbons that's fallen down. <laughs> there we go. We've got a side-by-side -side, side -side comparison. Oh, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. I can see that. My arm's really hurt in here. <laughs> you can put them down. <laughs> well done. Thank you, Kai. And I lighten them. We will be lighting them all very shortly. We'll light them all for our last song that we're going to sing together. Um, so the candle reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world. But what did Jesus mean when he said that he was the light of the world? Well, we know how important lights are um, in the natural sense. We have lighthouses that guide ships safely into port, that keep them away from dangerous rocks. We have lights that signal for planes as they land um, safely in the dark. Lights guide the way that lead us to safety. Over lockdown in 2020, like the rest of the country, Tobes and I were going on lots and lots of walks. We were staying with my mum in Essex, um, and so we were exploring all the different fields and woods, um, and as far as we could go within our safe, what was it, radius? I can't remember what the radius was now. Um, but we wanted to try a different route, so we, we went out for a walk, and of course this was a great idea to try a different route because it was getting dark, I'd forgotten my phone, and Toby was on 5% battery, so... You can see where this is going. Um, obviously, we got completely lost. Um, and Toby was adamant that he knew exactly where he was going. But, sure enough, the sun set, my phone died, um, and suddenly we were lost in the woods, knee-deep in mud. You know, as the light starts to fade, that quite nice dusky light, and then all of a sudden the light just drops. And we're in the middle of the woods, in the Essex countryside, We've no idea where we're going. So we did what all sensible, rational people would do. We picked a direction and we just kept going. So we just kept walking and kept walking. And Toby will probably tell this story a bit differently. Um, but I'm the one with the microphone, so... <laughs> telling it my way. Um, Toby was adamant he knew where he was going. I was adamant we were completely lost. So as you can imagine, the conversation was very light-hearted and fun. Um, but it was getting darker and darker. And I, at one point, I was in mud up to my knees in the middle of the woods in the pitch black like oh my goodness how on earth are we going to get out of this but sure enough after an hour and a half of walking the rising dread and the growing darkness we saw a light through the clearing and we had found our way home but what did Jesus mean when he said that he was the light of the world 
Well, in John 8, it says, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. This is one of the seven I am statements that Jesus makes about himself. And all of these seven statements have um, one word in common. Does anyone know what that word is? That's another word. They have two words in common. <laughs> and one of the words that they have in common is the word the. When Jesus says that he is the light of the world, he is saying something really significant about himself. And light in this context, it can also mean truth, that he is the truth. So Jesus isn't just saying that he is a light or a way or a truth, but the light and the way and the truth. Jesus is the light in the world that has been darkened by sin. And if we want to find our way home out of darkness, it is the light of his word and his truth that we are to follow. How are you doing there, John? <laughs> Your arm's aching yet. <laughs> Amazing. Um, because we live in this postmodern world, don't we, where truth is subjective. There are lots of ways and different truths that we could live out and we could follow. Um, and even ones that look and sound very similar to Jesus, but often require us to give nothing up and don't cost us anything. But following Jesus is not just another wellness journey or ideology of love that makes the world a better place or makes us feel better about ourselves. Jesus offers himself to us and lights up the way for us, a way of living that leads to eternal life. But the thing is, and the thing that makes Jesus distinct from any other truths, is that the primary goal of living a life that is yielded to the ways of Jesus is not just for the sake of us, but for the sake of others. In Matthew 5, it says, you, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it under a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So my encouragement and my prayer for us this morning is that we might clothe ourselves with the confidence that comes from putting on Christ, and not because he is a light, but because he is the light. Be bold, be courageous this Christmas season. I know it's, it's suddenly become way more challenging than we ever anticipated it would be. But that's even more reason to share a message of hope to your friends and family who don't know Jesus. So as you leave today with these kind of strange little oranges that represent all these different things, hold on to the question of whose life are you going to light up this Christmas? See, Christmas is full of lots of different lights, and we've got our Advent candles here as well. John, I think you can... I don't really know what to do with you now. <laughs> you can give John a massive round of applause. So good. So good. Well done. Awesome. Um, Luke, Amy Jones, are you here? Nicole? You guys both want to come up? Can we give them a huge round of applause? <laughs> woo, 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 woo. John, do you want to? My mic on. My mic on. Great. Yes? Fantastic. So I wasn't expecting to uh, ask Luke and Nicole up dressed like this, but this is the way it's worked out. Um, so Luke and Nicole, do you want to come up? They're going to light our Advent cal candles uh, today. It's actually their last Sunday with us, um, and uh, I'm, I'm sure you won't forget it in a long time. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's a chance to say thank you. Luke has been on staff for the last four years, uh, but he's also he, he left the staff at the beginning of uh, October and has been uh, around with Nicole for the last few uh, months as they uh, see out the end of Nicole's job and Luke, uh, they're moving up to Derbyshire. Yeah. Um, you guys are going to be so missed. Um, we're so grateful so for all that you've done. Can we just give them a massive round of applause oh, for all yeah. they've done? <laughs> so
So Luke, Luke ran the show. He was the operations manager. He had lots of answers that I still chase him for now, even though it's been two months. Yeah. The common uh, phrase is, oh, that's a Luke question. Let's ask Luke. <laughs> Uh, so we thought as a way of marking it, Luke and Nicole would light the advent calen the candles uh, today. So um, do you want to... Great. Come round. Have you got the... I'm going to need the what's name. Yeah. Um, so we're going to relight the first three candles of our advent wreath, which is hope, peace and joy. Brilliant. And... Um, the fourth Advent candle, the one that we celebrate today, is the candle of love. It's also the candle where we remember the shepherds who received the message. People that were not regarded highly were told the message that Jesus had come into the world. Amazing. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So Jesus demonstrated his self-giving love in his ministry as the Good Shepherd. And Advent is a time of kindness, thinking of others, and sharing with others. And it is a time to love as God loved us by giving us his most precious gift. As God is love, let us be love also. We're going to invite the band up. We're going to sing a city on a hill. There are actions to this. I will jump up at some point if I can remember them. But if somebody else who remembers them really well... Wants to do uh, it. Lizzie? Oh, come on. Yes. Woo! Amazing. If you want to get your Chris Dingles ready, I'll come around and I'll light them as we worship together. I might need um, Daddy and Happy Fur. Yeah? Okay. I'm going to go like your Teddy to hold it really carefully for me. We should have sung that one, shouldn't we? <laughs> that is true. I am a city on a hill. I am a light in the darkness. Jesus living in me can change the world. I am a city on a hill. I am a light in the darkness. Jesus living in me can change the world. Let my light shine, let my light shine, let my light shine. Let my light shine, let my light shine, let my light shine. If God is born. Let my light shine, let my light shine, let my light shine. If God is for me, who can stand against me? Let my light shine, let my light shine, let my light shine. We are a city on a hill. We are a light in the darkness. Jesus living in us can change the world. We are a city on a hill. We are a light in the darkness. Jesus living in us can change the world. Let your light shine, let your light shine, let your light shine. Let it shine. Let your light shine, let your light shine, let your light shine. If God is for us, who can stand against us? Let your light shine, let your light shine, let your light shine. If God is for us, He can stand against us. Let your light shine, let your light shine, let your light shine. We are a city on a hill. We are a light in the darkness. Jesus living in us can change the world. We are a city on a hill. We are a light in the darkness. Jesus living in us can change the world. We'll do the chorus again now the uh, now the lights have gone down, we can see the candles a bit more. Let your light shine, let your light shine, let your light shine. Let it shine. 
City on a hill, we are a light in the darkness. Jesus living in us can change the world. Brilliant, well done. Look at that, perfect timing. Did everybody get lit? Yeah, great. Yes, yeah. So, um we have got our Christmas services coming up next week. So we've got a crib on the 24th. Um, sh- there should be some leaflets at the back as well. We've got our Christmas Day service and midnight communion as well. Um, at the moment, we're hoping they'll still be in person. Of course, we'll still be wearing masks and keeping our distance and making that as safe as possible. That is our plan. But do keep an eye out on the WhatsApp and on your emails as well um, in case any of that changes. Um, but God bless you. Christmas Day? Yeah. Yeah, I said that, didn't I? Christmas Day. Oh, Christmas Day will yeah. be in person. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. And nothing on Boxing Day. And yeah, no service on Boxing Day. So please don't turn up on the 26th because the doors will be firmly shut. Um, but hopefully we'll see you over the next week or so. Um, if not, we'll be tuning in online. But God bless you and go well. Enjoy your Chris Tingles. Um, stick them out somewhere where people say, what on earth is that alien that you have made? And you can tell them all about what it is. Um, So I'm going to pray for us as we leave. Should we stand? Thank you, Lord. So Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are the light in the world. And Father, where other competing narratives come and try to disrupt that or take that away, Father, we want to boldly proclaim that you are the light in the world. And Jesus, we pray for opportunities this Christmas to speak of your light and your hope. Embolden us and fill us with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, friends. Well done to all of you who tuned in online. Um, We hope you've made your Christine goals. Do send us some photos if you've made some at home. Um, God bless you and go well.